un- unexpected um, day today, of course, the week right before fall break. I mean, we could just have an early fall break, but uh, that's okay. We're so close to finishing up this week. So we're going to go ahead and continue on um, with this um, 7.3. You should have already done the notes. I'd recommend if you didn't finish them, go back and finish the 7.3 notes before you watch this video. Um, Because this is really all you're accomplishing today. I'm going to give you some more practice problems as well. But it's going to be a relatively easy day. It's Monday anyways. So in the 7.3 notes, there was a question, I believe number five. Some people messaged me that they were a little bit confused about what it was asking. And that's actually what I'm going to go over here. So in 7.3, we were introduced to the work energy theorem, which is that network equals the change in kinetic energy. This is your kinetic energy final minus your kinetic energy initial. That's a change in your kinetic energy. Now, the cool thing about this theorem is that we can solve for a lot of different things using it. Yes, here we only see three things, right? We see network and then two different kinetic energies. But if we replace those formulas with what we know for work, because we already know that one, and the new formula that you also saw in your notes for kinetic energy, here's what we have. This is, and I should clarify here, the net force, because that's the network, right? Um, Times D, that's the formula for network, equals, this is the formula for kinetic energy final, minus this is the formula for kinetic energy initial. So we have a lot more variables here that we could possibly solve for given a situation. Now, if we take this even one step further, we also have a formula for net force. So we replace that one more time. This is mass times acceleration is the net force formula times the distance we travel with that force. And then we have our kinetic energy formulas. So in that question, I asked you to say, what are all the different variables we can solve for? Well, there's a lot. We can solve for the mass, that's M. We can solve for the acceleration. We can solve for distance. Hey, look, it's all the variables listed in the formulas. Now, we also already said M, so we're not going to say M again, but we also have V final and V initial. So the work energy theorem can actually be used to solve for any of these things, as well as, as of course, we can find the net force. We can also find the net work, and we can also find kinetic energies. So this formula solves for all of these individual variables as well as these concepts, network, net force, and kinetic energies. So that's what I was talking about in the notes on number five, if you were confused about that. This formula allows us to do a lot of different things. Let's try and put them together and try some easy problems to start with. We're just going to do one, two, three, four, and then five. I'm going to have you try that last one. Okay, so just follow along. Again, all of these problems I pulled out of the textbook, so if you don't want to copy them down, you can just write the page number and the number itself, and then you can look back to it there. So starting off super easy, it says a bumblebee has a mass of about 0 0.250 grams. Pause. What should we do to this? Do it real quick. We need to change that to kilograms. So even before we keep going, we want to make sure we do that. Now, if this were a multiple choice test, we might want to make sure that the units um, do use kilograms. Sometimes, depending on the question, we actually do want to keep it in grams. But here, we need to change this to kilograms. So real quickly, this is 0 0.250 grams. There are, um, in one kilogram, which is what I want, there's 1,000 grams. So this is actually going to be a really small number here because it's a bumblebee. A bumblebee does not have a lot of kinetic energy. Remember that kinetic energy is an object's ability to do work. If a bumblebee like bumps into you, it's not going to be able to do a lot of work on you because it's not going to hurt, right? If you want to think about work and kinetic energy in those terms, if this thing were to run into me, would it hurt? <laughs> that means it has a lot of um, capability to do work. And it has a lot of kinetic energy. Yeah. So a bumblebee here is not going to have a lot of kinetic energy. Point, in fact, uh, 0, 0, 0, 0.00025 kilograms. Because its mass is not very big. Um, now, if its speed is 10 meters per second, we want to calculate its kinetic energy. So kinetic energy, this formula, if you just put K or KE, whichever is fine, um, is 1 half mass times its velocity squared. So this is a super easy question. I want you to try it. 
all we want to do is plug in and find the kinetic energy that it has traveling at this speed. Okay, so we have one half. Its mass is in kilograms, 0 0.0025. Its velocity is 10. Let's go ahead and plug all of this in. We have um, 0.5 times 0 0.00025 times 100. Um, I'm getting a kinetic energy of 0 0.0125. And remember that kinetic energy, because a change in kinetic energy equals work, that means they have the same units. So kinetic energy is also joules. So what this means is this bumblebee doesn't have a lot of capability to do work. Yeah, its mass is very small. It would have to be traveling at very, very, very high speeds for it to be able to do a lot of work. It's not gonna be able to do a lot of work here because its mass is so small. Let's try another one here. Okay, now this one's a little bit different. A small truck has a mass of 2,100 kilograms. Good to go kilograms. What is the work required? So we want to know the net work required to decrease the speed of the vehicle from 22 to 12 meters per second on a level road. So it's just a flat road. So they are asking for the net work formula now. Now here's how we know as well that we're going to be using the work energy theorem. We use the work energy theorem when we are given speeds. That's because kinetic energy is based on speeds. The faster you're going, the more kinetic energy you have. So again, here's how we know that we're not just using work equals force times distance, because that is a formula we have. Because there are speeds, if you want to add that to your notes, this means we're going to use the work energy theorem. So we need to know its um, final kinetic energy and its initial kinetic energy. Let's go ahead and replace some stuff here. Because I'm trying to find the network, I am not going to replace this with anything. Yes, we have a formula for that and it's force times distance or m times a times distance. But I'm trying to find that. I'm not trying to find force. I'm not trying to find the acceleration or the distance. Yeah. So this is going to stay put because it's what I want to know. So we need to, though, replace with the kinetic energy formulas because that's where my speeds come in. They come into my kinetic energy formulas. So let's go ahead and replace these. We have mass velocity final squared minus one half mass velocity initial squared. Taking a look at what we have here, we actually know all of the variables on this side. I'm gonna have you try it, but you need to be very careful. We are decreasing the speed. So think about when we're looking here and here, from 22 to 12. Think about which one is your initial and which one is your final. We are decreasing the speed. That tells us something about the work. Go ahead and give it a shot. Okay, let's check. So net work equals one half. My mass is 2,100. My final velocity is 12. I'm starting at 22 and decreasing to 12. You need to be very careful here. We want to end up at 12. That means my work is going to be negative. Remember, negative work tells us we are decreasing the speed of an object. Okay, then all we got to do is plug this whole thing in. I should have already done it, but that's okay. 0. 0.5 times 2100 times 12 squared minus 0. 0.5 times 2100 times 22 squared. We should have gotten a lot of work. Negative three five seven zero zero, so three hundred and fifty seven thousand joules it will take of work in order to decrease the speed of this truck. So, this is a lot of work that needs to be done again, especially compared to um, looking at the kinetic energy up here of B. We have to do a lot of work, the faster something is traveling the more work needs to be done in order to produce a change, right? Um, so I hope that makes sense. We have to do a lot of work because this is a very heavy object traveling at these high speeds. Okay, let's try another one. Let's make it a little bit more complicated now. 
So again, this whole time we're going to be using the work energy theorem and how we know is we're going to be given speeds. Normally, way back when, when we were dealing with forces and friction, if we were given speeds, we needed a kinematic equation, right? Position or velocity or timeless. Here, if we are talking about work and given speeds or looking for speeds, that's work energy theorem. So that's how we know. So a man rides a scooter on a level road. The interaction between the scooter and the road causes the road to exert a constant net force of 1,200 newtons. So I'm going to go ahead and do, draw this. The road pushes him forward. These are equal and opposite reactions, right? Um, the road pushes him forward with 1,200 newtons in the forward direction over a distance of 20 meters. So remember, here is our distance as well. We always want to show the direction of travel because if the force and the direction of travel are not the same direction, that's going to matter. We have the combined mass of the man and his scooter. Suddenly the wind picks up and air resistance pushes against him in the direction opposite his motion with a constant force of 800 newtons. If he is moving with an initial speed of five meters per second, what is his final speed? That means the final equals question mark. So once again, we have to be kind of careful here. Notice that we're talking about speeds but they do not actually say work anywhere in this question. So you might be kind of confused. You might be like, how do I address this question? Now, work is, again, force over distance, yeah? Um, and we have the mass of this object. If we're given mass, if we're given distance, if we're given speeds here, we're going to be still able to use the work energy theorem. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that. We're going to want to replace the information here until we have all of our variables that we need to plug in. So I'm going to go ahead and replace um, the net work. I want to double check something here. Yes. Um, with the formula for net work, and then we'll replace our kinetic energies as well. The reason why I am replacing the net work with its formula is because. I'm not given the network. I am given some forces. I'm given a distance. Yeah, we're gonna need to replace that with its formula. So F net times D equals one half mass velocity final squared minus one half mass velocity initial squared. Now, what it's telling us is he is going forward. He's being pushed forward with a force of 1,200 newtons. And then wind starts pushing back with 800 newtons. Yeah, we have this picture here. I want to give you a moment and see if you guys can figure out. All we have to do is plug in. We're going to have to do one little thing. But other than that, we're going to plug in everything else we know. Keep in mind that I'm going forward with 1,200, backward with 800 newtons. That's going to do something to my net force. Go ahead and give it a shot. Okay, so I just want you to take some time, try it on your own. Sometimes if you just listen to me talk, we don't understand anything, yeah? We need to be able to think for ourselves for a bit. So here's what I want you to realize. We are going to plug in everything except for V final, right? V final equals question mark was our goal. Now I can plug in everything actually. We just have to be careful here with the net force. If I'm going forwards with 1,200 newtons and backwards with 800 newtons, my net force means I need to subtract those. They're competing forces, right? They're going opposite. So 1,200 minus 800, that means my net force is 400 newtons. My distance was 20 meters. We've got one half, I believe the mass was 90. Yep. We are looking for velocity final. What is his final speed? We have one half, 90. It tells us the initial speed of five meters per second. So 
So let's go ahead and move some stuff around and solve. This is going to give us eight with three zeros. We've got 45 the final squared minus, let's see, 45 times 25. Yep, 1125. Okay, I'm just gonna start moving stuff around here. This should be the easy part once we've got the equation at least. We've got 9125 equals 45 V final squared divide by 45 divide by 45. 9125 divided by 45, which is 202.8, I'm gonna say. We got V final squared, and don't forget this is a square, V final squared. So we need the square root of that answer, which gives us a final velocity of 14.2 meters per second. Ignore that little blip there. That's just, a, there we go, cross the road. Good. So again, we want to see, based on what we have, we need to kind of replace the formulas from there. If they said, here's the network, here's the kinetic final, find the kinetic initial, well, then I only need to use this version of the formula because they give me those big chunks. But if they give me a lot of the little pieces, the forces, the distance, the masses, the velocities, then we have to break the formula down into smaller chunks with smaller variables, right? Work is a big thing. Kinetic energy is a big thing. They, those things have their own formulas. Because we're given all the little pieces, we have to break it down into the formula with all these little pieces. So let's go ahead and try this one more time here. I'm going to have you guys try this one, I believe. Nope, I'm not going to have you guys try this one. <laughs> I'm going to have you guys try the next one. Okay, so we have one more type of situation here. Um, where we need to figure out um, what version of the formula we need to use. Let's go ahead and read it. Calculate the final speed of a two kilogram object that is pushed for 22 meters by a 40 um, Newton force. Ah, uh, we have an angled force here, directed 20 degrees below the horizontal on a smooth level floor, guys. This means no friction. So we're starting off easier here. We're not dealing with friction. Assume the object starts from rest. So we are going to be using, again, if we have a distance, an object being pushed over a distance by a force, that is work. Force times distance, that's what we're talking about here. This is work. Now it does say calculate the final speed. So once more, this means our final velocity equals what? We don't know. That means we need to break it down into our individual formulas. Yes, this is the work energy formula. But because we have, we're looking for speed, we are gonna need to break this down into its individual pieces. So net force times distance, one half mass velocity final squared minus one half mass velocity initial squared. I want you to try this to start off with. Go ahead and I'm gonna have you pause the video. We are looking for velocity final. That means we have to know everything else in this equation. Um, we are assuming the object starts from rest. Keep in mind that'll be the initial velocity. I want to see if you, how far you can get. If you get stuck, press play and we'll go from there. Okay, so if I need to know everything, notice that we know D. D is 22. We know M. M is 2. We know the initial velocity. That's 0. Therefore, in order to get this, we still need to find the net force. Now, the net force here is not 40 newtons. Remember, the net force is in the direction of travel, and this angle of 40 newtons is being pushed down. So let's draw a picture here. It is traveling um, um, on a smooth level floor. So this is a flat surface with no friction. 
we have this 40 degree force directed 20 degrees below the horizontal. So here's my horizontal. 20 degrees below the horizontal. Think about where that would go. Here's 20 degrees below the horizontal. Now again, what this really means is that somebody's probably pushing at an angle from the top, right? But that ends up being directed down. So this is really where the force is coming from, but it's really, again, coming downwards off our object here. So this is 40 newtons. We have an X component, we have a Y component, right? This would be my Y component. And then this up here is my X component. So our goal is to find the force in the direction of travel. Think about where this is traveling. It's just being pushed on a horizontal surface. Here's my direction of travel. I need to find the net force in that direction. Now again, we can use here FD cosine theta. I think the way I wanna teach it from here on out is for you guys to think about what is the component in the direction of travel so we're not confused about what angle to use. We're just focusing on, regardless of the angle, what component do we need to find and then going from there. So, the component in the direction of travel here is the x component. That's the same direction as my distance traveled. So I need to find the x component. So we know that's going to be 40 because my angle is here. That's going to be cosine 20. So it ends up working out that it's cosine. Remember that sometimes um, it's, it's not always. So we want to be careful here. So this is my X component. This is the net force in the direction of travel. Net force is always what's going on in the direction of travel. So, so 37.6 newtons. Okay, so this is my net force. That is the only force in the direction of travel. That's all we care about. So I want you to go back up here if you didn't. Um, you can just click continue if you were able to finish this up. Now that we know the net force, now we can plug everything in. So I'll scroll up as well. Our net force is 37.6. We know everything else. Because there is no friction, that's why our net force was just the X component of the force applied. Go ahead and try to finish this problem off now that we know everything we need to. Solve for V final. Okay, so let's try this. We've got my um, net force. I'm gonna go ahead and just plug this in. Our net force is 37.6 because there's no friction. Our distance is 22. Our mass, we have one half mass times velocity final, which we don't know. We're trying to find the velocity final. Minus one half, the mass is two. Velocity initial is zero. This started from rest, excuse me. So really, this is gonna go bye-bye. Zero squared, that's gonna end up canceling that out. Let me move my camera here. So we have 37.6 times 22. We've got 827.2 is the work done. We have um, one half times two. Well, that's just one. So velocity final squared. Let's take the square root of that. Square root of 827.2. We should have gotten a velocity final of 28.8 .8 or roundabout. So once again, when we're doing net work, be very careful to find the net force first like we normally do. We know how to find a net force. If there are opposing forces, we have to take that into consideration. There was only one force here, so that was the net force. I'm gonna have you guys try the next question entirely on your own first, and then you're gonna click continue and I'm gonna go through it. Keep in mind here, this now has friction. 
Luckily, they tell it to you, so you don't got to calculate it. But um, this is going to be very similar to the um, last question. I will tell you the only difference is our net force needs to account for friction. Everything else is actually the exact same. Go ahead and give it a shot. Okay, let's check. So we have, again, a bobsled, bobsleigh. That's a little bit different. Normally I say bobsled. Um, I'm going to draw my box. This is my glorious bobsled, whatever it is. Um, as fast as they can down the 50 meet straight, relatively horizontal starting stretch. So this is flat ground. Again, they push um, with a magnitude of 285 newtons directed at an angle of 20 degrees below the horizontal. So once again, here's what they push with. 20 degrees below the horizontal. Be careful with that. Now, as they push, they have a 60 um, Newton kinetic friction and air drag force. So that's going to go backwards because if they're pushing again kind of forwards, yes, it's at an angle, but it's forwards. This is going to go backwards. So keep in mind that again, when we do this question, hopefully you remembered, we needed the net force in the direction of travel. So we want the speed of the sleigh right before the crew jumps in at the end. That means velocity final again. So let's take a look. We need to use our network equation, our net, our net energy, excuse me, work energy theorem for Pete's sake. And because we are dealing with forces and distances and velocities, we have to replace everything with the formulas for these individual concepts. Okay, so once again, we have a situation where we know the distance. The distance is 50 meters. We know the mass. We're trying to find the final velocity. And we know the initial velocity. Again, it says, um, from rest at the start of the race, they're starting it off. So this is gonna be once again, an initial velocity of zero. Hopefully you caught that. So what we need to know once again is the net force. Even though they are pushing with an angled force, yes, we need to know the actual force in the direction of travel. That's gonna be the x component here, we're going to have to take into account that it's also fighting against friction. So let's go ahead and find the net force. My net force is going to be the x component that I push with minus friction. We're fighting against it. So let's go ahead off to the side. I'm going to scroll up. We're going to find the x component here. 325, 20, here's my x component. That means that's going to be cosine once again. So that's 325 cosine because that's the adjacent ah, 20. I'm running out of space. Ah, go away. Okay. 325 cosine 20. Woo, 325 cosine 20. There we go. We should get uh, 305.4. So this is the force we actually push with in the direction of travel. 305.4 minus 60, which equals 245.4. So if you were able to finish the whole question, you can um, click continue. I'm going to have you pause it again here. Now that we know the net force, we know everything we need to know in order to plug in and solve for the final velocity. Go ahead and give it a shot. I'll scroll up. There's our net force. There's all the information we have. Okay, let's try it. So our distance is 50. Our mass is 325, I need to know that. Oh, crap. 
Okay, I just realized that I put 325 for the force. Um, ah, shoot. What do I want to do? Let's just say this is 325 also. I'm going to go ahead and fix the video. <laughs> so that I'm just going to say to use 325 because I totally messed up. That's okay. Okay. So this is still going to be our net force. We're just going to go with it. I will fix that in the video um, for you ahead of time. So it'll be like uh, looking in the past here. 245 times the distance man, is uh, 50. Equals one half. The mass is 325, which is I, I was looking at the wrong thing. Uh, the velocity finals we're trying to find minus one half. We're saying the mass is 325 as well as what that force was. Um, velocity initial is zero. We started from rest. So we have 245.4 times 50. It's 12. Oh, wait, sorry, 1, 2, 2, 7, 0 equals 0.5 times 325. We got 162.5 times V final squared. And this is gone. Whenever we start from rest, the kinetic uh, energy initial is 0 as well. We don't have a velocity, therefore the kinetic energy is 0. So 162.5 divided by 162.5. Uh, 162.5. We should get about 75.5 equals V final squared. Let's take the square root. And we get a final velocity of 8.7 meters per second. Okay, so from here, you guys are going to have some more practice problems. You can watch this video again. I'm sorry, I kind of screwed up there with the um, mass and the force, I wasn't looking at it correctly. It's gonna be a day, I can already just tell. <laughs> gonna have some practice problems um, to hopefully get good with this before I move on. Like I said on Friday, whatever we get to this week, guys, is what we'll be testing on. Um, so don't stress, I'm not gonna try and cram everything in. If we can't get to everything, we wanna be sure that we're good with what we know. 